Hall 2 and 5 in the American Athletic Conference. Tulsa will be in action at Tulane uh, this Friday. It will be an 8 p.m. Eastern time start on ESPNU. Stand by for Coach uh, Montgomery from Tulsa. We'll just quickly run through um, uh, the details of our player, players of the week this week. We mentioned earlier the offensive player of the week in the conference was UConn receiver Noel Thomas. Uh, he had seven receptions for career high 108 yards, both UConn touchdowns, uh, in a 20 to 17 win against previously unbeaten and 13th ranked Houston. Um, helped UConn gain bowl eligibility for the first time since 2010. Uh, Thomas had a four yard touchdown catch on the opening drive of the game. Uh, for the Huskies, and he had a 45-yard touchdown catch midway through the fourth quarter to put UConn ahead 20-10. to 10. Uh, The Defensive Player of the Week is USF cornerback Dietrich Nichols. He had eight tackles with a pass breakup, two interceptions to lead USF to a 65-27 win against Cincinnati. Um, keeps USF alive in the American East Division race and gives them their seventh win of the season. Uh, Nichols scored a touchdown on a 29-yard interception return in the second quarter. Uh, which gave USF a 34 0 lead, uh, leading a defense that forced six turnovers on the day. The special teams player of the week is East Carolina kicker Davis Plowman. Um, as Coach McNeil mentioned, scored a career high 14 points to help East Carolina to a 44 7 win uh, at UCF. Um, leaves ECU within one win of bowl eligibility entering the final week of the season. Uh, Plowman connected on field goals of 45, 36, and 36 yards and was 5 for 5 on PATs. And we've been joined now by Tulsa coach Philip Montgomery. The Golden Hurricane is 5-6 and six overall, 2-5 and five in the American Athletic Conference. Uh, Tulsa was in action this past Saturday against Navy, um, and Navy won the game 44-21. to 21. Uh, Up next for the Golden Hurricane will be this Friday at Tulane. That will be an 8 p.m. Eastern time start. The game will be televised on ESPNU. Uh, coach, thank you for joining us on the call today. If you would take a minute to tie up the game against Navy, please, and then what you expect to see as you um, uh, head to New Orleans to face Tulane on Friday. Okay, thank you. Uh, you know, <clears throat> Navy is an outstanding football team, very difficult to prepare for. And, you know, when you have a, a, a really a three-day period to get ready for them, they uh, got great leadership. And, and, you know, Ken and those guys have done a great job with them. Reynolds is legit. He's an outstanding player. Uh, you know, I don't think they get enough credit for what they do defensively. I think they're an outstanding football team defensively. And and so, uh, you know, I think our guys battle, play extremely hard. Uh, tough, tough Navy team to go against. As we look at Tulane, uh, outstanding defensively, especially. Uh, they got some guys up front that are just uh, real men playing up there. And so, uh, you know, we got our hands full this week, got short week with Thanksgiving going on, just like everybody else. And so, uh, you know, our guys have got to get back, get back healthy, and, and get back ready to go. We'll take questions from Coach Montgomery, please. Star one on your telephone. We'll put you in the queue, and then the operator will introduce you. Coach, if I could take the first one, if I may, uh, just something we're working on here in the conference office, um, just about the conference in general, if you could. Um, you know, three top 25 teams in the conference. We've had as many as four. Uh, we have seven bowl-eligible teams in the league and could have as many as nine if things shake out a uh, certain way this week. And you'll certainly play a big part in that. Um, can you talk about the, the health of the conference overall in your first year uh, through it, um, both from a from a uh, top-of-the-line standpoint and then a, a depth standpoint? Well, I, you know, I think we said it all year long. I mean, there's a lot of parity in this league, and we've got an outstanding league with, with a lot of great student-athletes and, and coaches. And so, you know, as you look at our non-conference schedules and, and the teams that, that uh, you know, the American has played, uh, I think we held our own and, and really – you know, honestly beat some teams that are getting a lot of recognition right now. So I think uh, we have an extremely strong conference, a, a conference that, you know, definitely needs to be in the mix, not just this year, but every year. Thank you, Coach. Move on to the next question, please. We'll take our next question from Shannon Green from the Orlando Sentinel. Good morning, Coach. How are you doing today? I'm good, Shannon. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. You better get uh, something for that cough. <laughs> I know it's going around. 
Uh, Coach, I'd heard from from various people um, throughout my time as a sports journalist that the difference in, in, between Power Five conferences or schools at that level uh, versus schools that are not there is the resources and the in the depth, the difference of depth on the team. I'm wondering, have you noticed that to be true that there is a difference level in, in the amount of depth that you have? Well, I think, you know, as you look across the board, uh, you know, depth is going to be an issue at a lot of different schools. It just depends on where they're at, whether they're in so-called the Power Five conferences or or not. And so, uh, obviously, we've got to improve our depth here. But as you look across the board throughout our conference, you know, uh, Memphis, Houston, some of those other guys that that have uh, – been playing well for for several years now. Their depth is, depth is probably built up a little bit more than than others. Uh, you look at some of those again in those in the Power Five. Uh, you know some of the some of those in there has issues just like everybody else. So I think that's you know throughout college football, and I think it's just you know where your program is at this stage. And finally, what are the things that you're hoping your team can build on headed into their um one of their last games this season headed to prepare for next year? Well, you know, for us, our, our goal is to get bowl eligible, and we got we got one game left to get that in. You know, obviously that would be a, a huge milestone for us and, and part of the building process of this program. And so our guys are focused in on that right now and focused in on Tulane, which is an outstanding football team. And so we've uh, we've got we've got some things in order and some things that we've got to get done. You know, we've uh, – We've laid a foundation now of what we're trying to accomplish, and and uh, you know getting bowl eligible would be that next step. Okay, thanks, Coach. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you. We'll take our next question from Ronnie Woodward with the Greenville Daily Reflector. Hey, Coach, how are you? I'm good, Ronnie. How are you? Good. Um, kind of going on the same theme, but uh, I cover East Carolina, obviously. And- you have five wins. ECU have five has five wins. Do you um, is that something you're talking about with your players this week? You know the ball eligibility thing, or is it something that is just kind of understood that that you don't have to stress to them or or talk to them about? We don't really have to stress it anymore. We've been talking about it since day one, and that's been one of our main goals is is to get bowl eligible. So uh, our guys are are very much aware of it. We're not going to hide from the fact that uh, you know we got one game to get it done in. Uh, with that being said, you know, there's no pressure to it. Let's just relax, go play, and, and you know, let's achieve achieve one of our goals that we set at the very first of the year. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Mm-hmm. And we'll take our next question from Kyle Kinsing with Athlon Sports. Coach, uh, Russell had said that preparing for the uh, triple option offense was something that they had to start doing in the preseason Having to do it over that one-week turnaround as you guys did last week, what are the difficulties about preparing for that particular offense? Well, you know, you just don't see it very often. And, um, you know, you're basically having to install a, a new a new defense in a matter of a week. Now, yes, you're going to use some of the same principles and things that you've used prior to, but uh, what they make you do and the way they make you play uh, it's entirely new, and you've got to play really assignment sound football, and so very difficult to prepare for, and especially with the guys that they're doing it with, guys that have been doing it now and doing it well for, you know, three years or more, uh, with an outstanding quarterback that everything he's he's seen in the past, I mean, you're not going to throw anything new. At him. And so uh, they're playing with an extreme amount of confidence right now, and they're they're a, an outstanding football team. And then kind of a big picture question. Uh, Nearing the end of this first year there at Tulsa, when you first came in, how much was the recent success of some top 25 finishes and, and a couple of CUSA championships, how much was that something that you kind of saw as maybe a cornerstone to build the program back up in the American? Well, you know, this program has had success no matter which conference it's been in, and they just had a couple of down years in here. And so uh, for us uh, coming in, because of the tradition that has been here and people have one, you knew that you could get it back there. You've just got to uh, you got to do it the right way. you got to go out and hit the road and recruit and bring players in that are going to continue to keep uh, improving your skill level and your size level and, and continue to keep building on the positive things of the program. Thank you. Hello? 
we have no further questions in queue. Okay. Coach, thank you for your time today. Look forward to hearing from you again uh, uh, next year, uh, and we appreciate your, your participation all year long. No problem. Thank you all. all right. Coach Philip Montgomery from Tulsa.